Well, she was a London girl, and she was brought in as a character, a town girl, who didn't know country ways at all. And having to explain everything to Peggy was in a way of explaining everything to the listeners. I see, as part of the famous agricultural storylines. Yes, it was, it was a sort of information programme. We were told it wasn't a drama. Oh, no, it was real life, overheard. And how would you describe Peggy's character? Well, she's just, she's a little bit like her mother. She was very forthright. She knew what was right and what was wrong, and she stuck to it. And I think Peggy is growing more and more like that. Not much of a sense of humour, but she's, uh, she's beginning to show a little glimmer of fun these days, Peggy is. Oh, no, I made a special point of asking that. He just laughed at me. Anyway, they can't tell it's a blue baby till after it's born, so it couldn't be that. And Jennifer didn't have a word of explanation? Not a solitary word, except to confirm what the doctor told me, that there was nothing at all to worry about. There was quite a, I suppose for the time, a shocking storyline in the 1960s when one of her daughters, Jennifer, became pregnant out of wedlock. Yes, in those days it wasn't done, of course. We had some very entertaining letters from listeners who really believed it was happening. I have one letter, which which I still have, uh, addressed to uh, Mrs Peggy Archer, the ball, Ambridge, stamped, put in the post, and it reached me eventually. It said, Dear Mrs Archer, I think you ought to know that your daughter Jennifer is going to have a baby. Only three people know, the doctor, the vicar, and your daughter Lillian. Why don't you know? Don't you listen to the programme? <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> it's wonderful, isn't it? Here we are, coming out of the church. Don't we look happy? Of course we do. I was so lucky to find that dress, you know. It was just perfect. And that little apricot hat. And you were so handsome in your morning suit. Your husband, Roger, suffered from Alzheimer's, didn't he? And that meant that you were able to bring a real personal perspective when the archers decided to introduce the illness as a plot line. Yes, yes. Um, we were consulted on about how we would feel about doing this story, knowing that my husband um, had had the problem. And... Uh, I thought it was an excellent idea, and so did uh, Arnold. And it's something that needed to be brought out into the open. It, uh, it was something that was rather brushed under the carpet in those days. You didn't talk about it. But it was when I listened to the recordings afterwards that uh, it, it got to me a little bit. It was so sad, that final scene, when Peggy is saying goodbye to Jack. Yes. Yes, when she she took the book of photographs of their wedding, yes. I'll just give you another kiss. Ah, you're dozing off, aren't you? I tell you what, I'll just stay a little bit longer. And hold your hand. Your son David became a professional ballet dancer, didn't yes, he? Yes, he did. But it was very difficult for him when that career came to an end. Yes, yes, he was He was married with a lovely wife and little daughter, but when he had to retire because um, his back had gone, his feet had gone, and, of course, she was still a lovely dancer. She didn't want to retire, naturally. So she found a new partner, and I'm afraid... Um, that broke the marriage up and uh, he never got over that and I'm afraid he started drinking and it um, it took over so that he couldn't stop and it finally killed him And you have a picture of your son on the wall in character Yes, as Dr Capelius he was a wonderful character dancer and this particular performance he was absolutely brilliant when he took his solo curtain at the end of Act Two, which was his big act, the uh, applause was enormous. And my husband turned to me and said, What's that noise? I said, They're stamping their feet. Clapping wasn't enough. They were stamping their feet. And that was the proudest moment of my life. When your life is 
touched by tragedy like that and what happened to your husband as well. How supportive are other cast members? Very supportive. We really are like a, a family. It's lovely. I mean, even today when I go in, and all these lovely young actors, and they say, as soon as they see me coming, let me take your coat for you. Would you like a cup of tea? I'll get you a cup of tea. They treat me like old granny, you know. It's lovely. You go on in, Gran. I'll bring Hilda. Oh, she looks quite sweet in a basket. She is sweet and much misunderstood. Oh, Hilda, really. <laughs> and before I let you go, I have to ask you about the real villain of the archers. I want you to spill the beans now, and I'm talking about Hilda, your cat. <laughs> I gather that uh, Hilda has a great many fans on the radio. <laughs> She's, she's a great success. I think if I have a scene with Hilda, it's Hilda there rooting for, not Peggy. <laughs> the only trouble is... What? Well, I couldn't go all by myself. I feel so self-conscious mm. if I went on my own. Do you know, Peggy, I've never been to a cat show. Well, you could always rectify that check. Mm? Tomorrow, if you like. Oh. When you made that pilot for the archers all those years ago had you any idea that you'd still be playing in it at the age of 100 i had no idea i would ever be 100 for a start let alone still working <laughs> but i hope i can keep on doing it for a bit and perhaps set an example to some other old people who've just given up but they might think well if that old girl can do it then so can i i hope i'm hoping that well, I hope you have a very happy birthday. Thank you very much.